Okay, well, uh, here is our presentation for CDAR for the uh, online virtual uh, version of CDAR 2020 in this interesting year. I'm here to give a talk on a new facility. I'm not, oh, sorry, it's not a new facility. It's a, it's a new observing capability that we're doing by combining two existing facilities. And this is called Mango Rego. And it's a North American network of air glow auroral oxygen red line imagers. And this presentation is by myself and Asti Bat, Emma Stanswick, Elizabeth Kendall, Brendan Bickner, and Tony Van Eichen. So the idea here uh, that motivates this is that we have, we make a, a, a big deal appropriately out of our ever expanding networks of ground-based observations that support geospace research and CEDAR research in general, CEDAR research and, and ground-based research in general. And um, the idea here is that if you look at Superdarn, for instance, the Superdarn community has done a really good job of integrating the data from all of the radars that are deployed all over the world by a bunch of different countries. If you look at SuperMag, for instance, SuperMag has done a very good job of integrating data from and stitching together data from networks of ground-based magnetometers, which are deployed all over the world by many different programs operated by many different countries. And then you have, I, I was thinking about the third problem, which is the optical observations of things like air glow and the aurora. And while we have phenomenal ground-based observing capabilities now with things like Demos ASI and Mango and T-Rex and Miracle and, and other observatories around the world, um, there's actually been very little work done to properly develop techniques to stitch together observations from disparate arrays of these images. And there's a whole historical uh, set of completely valid reasons for that. We have everything to do with, for instance, the data's big and hard to work with, that different teams have developed different ways of putting images on the map, that uh, cameras operate looking at different wavelengths, cameras operate in different ways, at different cadences, with different, um, uh, field, different um, fields of view, and with different exposure times and so on. And so the problem is very non-trivial, and that is part of the reason why there hasn't been a solution. And, I, and, and so Asti Bat and myself and others at SRI and in the University of Calgary have sat down and we thought, well, we have these two um, imaging facilities. Uh, one is called REGO, which stands for Redline Geospace Observatory. This was a network, is a network of a, a nine, I believe, all sky imagers operating in the oxygen red line, which are deployed for um, auroral observations um, in support of, they were originally put in in support of the RISER project, and now they're in support of RISER and, um, um, and at also are part of the T-Rex, the new T-Rex project. And this provides uh, observations of the oxygen red line looking from deep within the polar cap, as our site at Resolute Bay, and then down into typically subauroral latitudes with fields of view extending into the northern, central, and western U.S., um, um, lower 48. On the other hand, we have the, and, and, and Rego operates uh, in, a, in a pretty standard way. We take images every three seconds, um, and those are timed with the Themis All Sky Imagers, and the data can be read by the Themis All Sky Imager read files and so on. And it's completely openly available data. Um, the other array that we're talking about here is the red line component, because Mango is expanding into other wavelengths in the next year or two. But we're talking about the red line component of the US Mango project, which stands for, which stands for Mid Latitude All Sky Imaging Network for Geospace Observations. This network is, is led by SRI International, and this network of cameras spans the lower 48, um, the fields of view span the lower 48 um, states and is now extending into Mexico with new sites in Mexico. And this is a network of imagers that is deployed not for auroral reasons, but to look at um, air glow. And, and as such, the, the requirements on the cameras are, are quite different than the Rego cameras. And the end result is that while Rego images at three seconds, Mango images and integrates at a five minute cadence. And so, you know, which, which you know, people in the CEDAR community will understand that difference very well, not in terms of different capabilities, but different requirements for the science. Now, uh, when we sat down and looked at this and we thought, you know, one of the things that we could do as a step toward 
integrating data from multiple different facilities is, is do something that I think rather obvious here, which is if you look at the two networks, what we have is a truly continent wide um, network of a continent, continental extent network of red line imagery. And that what we can do is we can extract something like a five minute data product out of the Rego imagers. And then we can merge that with a five minute data product from the Mango imagers. And then on the rare occasion when it's clear and many cameras are operating across both arrays and something interesting is going on, then we can start to explore with this combined data product um, questions to do with the way um, dynamics couple deep in the polar cap through the auroral zone to subauroral latitudes and down to mid latitudes. And so, for instance, how does how do large geomagnetic storms affect mid latitude dynamics in the upper atmosphere? And so, there's a whole host of questions I believe that we can attack with this. On top of that, it moves us in a concrete way towards the idea of having true a globally integrated network of all sky imager data product. It's a baby step, but it's a first step and it's a concrete step. And so the idea here is that we're gonna create Mango Rego, which is gonna be a five minute merged data product. It will be available via the Mango home page. And this will allow for studies of things, as I said, like geospace coupling from deep in the polar cap down to mid latitudes and I mean, all kinds of other, other interesting things. So the idea here, um, to move forward, what we have to do is develop a framework for integrating, visualizing, and quantifying auroral and air glow observations. Um, uh, and at the University of Calgary, we're working on a visualization program for our optical and rheometer data and other data. And the idea is that what we want to do is take the NOAA grid, which has been developed for the Ovation project, and that is really just the geographic lot longitudes divided up into uh, 1024 bins and the latitudes from minus 90 to 90 divided up into 512 bins. And, and that grid on the globe looks like the image on the left and I just zeroed in to show you the granularity here. It's about, for instance, three bins per degree of latitude and about three bins per degree of longitude. So it, it, it works out, um, it's, it's, a, it's a nice, easy grid to work with. And it's a standard grid now for us to work with. And what we're doing is developing products with this visualization company in Calgary. And you'll see a little bit of that as we move forward. And so then um, uh, Emma Spanswick and Brendan Bickner uh, grab some data from the Mango um, uh, website at SRI. And they sat down and they did some work in terms of how we might develop something that we would use with the rural data and the air glow data. And this is just, this, this, this is again, this is the very beginning of this. And this is, you know, what you're looking at here is not, is not how this is gonna look in the end, but this is projected on our dynamic viewer and I'll show a movie of that in just a minute. But the idea here is what we have are, is data from the, the Rego imagers and data from two of the Mango imagers. And this is, these are the painted at the same time and the, the, you're seeing a very well-defined structure in the air glow and the Mango imagers and very well-defined equator boundary of the rural oval, well poured of that in the red line imagers. And, and then, you know, and, and again, there's a lot of work we have to do in terms of thinking about how to compare our intensities measured in data numbers on the, the red line cameras in Canada, and the same thing from the cameras from Mango in the US. But anyway, Brendan took this and put this uh, together, and on this visualization framework that we are developing, and what I'm gonna do is just play this movie. And the idea here is that you can see, you know, this is meant to be a dynamic visualization where you can zoom in and you can move the globe around, you can change the speed that this is playing at. And then we're gonna develop techniques for dynamically overlaying these things. But the, the demonstration here is really to tell you that this is the first instance where we have developed the capacity to merge the Mango and the Rego uh, images and then very soon uh, we're hoping within the next few months we'll have a data product that people can actually look at and play around with. Um, I'm personally very excited about that and I think it's a great step forward. I'm just going to finish with a, um, a comment. We have another project at the University of Calgary that SRI is also involved in um, and it's called Aurora X. It's a Canada Foundation for Innovation project which builds upon the Swarm Aurora um, Aurora Swarm Science Project that was funded by ESA through the Danish Technical University. We're building upon that. 
developing Aurora X. And Aurora X is going to incorporate things like conjunction finders and things that are all aimed at uh, data discovery and will incorporate this visualization. And, and I imagine, because we, we want to start with tangible things, the first thing we'll start with on the visualization will be the Mango regular thing as a way of moving it forward and also a way of demonstrating capacity. So I'm excited about this. I'm looking forward to questions anybody might have. And there are also two other talks that have been given uh, on Mango by SRI at the senior meeting. And so the chance to learn about a lot of things here associated with these observations in Canada and the US. So thank you very much.